Tumise Adelaye has reopened his recruitment after being committed to The Ohio State University. We gotta talk about it after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related. Sports related, we have a good time. Today, we need to talk about Tumise Adelaye who has decided to reopen his recruitment, decommitting in a screen cap note on his Twitter account from Ohio State, where he thanked Ohio State, in particular Larry Johnson Sr., the defensive line coach and the man that was most responsible for his commitment. And that's going to dip Ohio State below the 300-point tally. It also means that they lose a five-star, according to the top 247, and a top 30 recruit in the 247 Sports Composite, just barely missing out on five-star status as consensus at this moment. But a couple of days ago, he gave an interview to Gigum 247 where he said at the time, still being committed to Ohio State, that it's still Texas A&M, Florida, and Alabama. I'm in contact with all those three of those schools. Probably every two or three days, they're still after me hard. They've all let me know they are willing to take this all the way to signing day. And that's a big deal. As to me say, committing to Ohio State caught a few of us off guard because it felt like Alabama, Texas a and were in on that. And then going to IMG Academy, Florida really getting into the mix after the transfer from there. Also coming from Katie Tompkins, where Jalen Milrow is the quarterback and committed to Texas. So this is going to be the kind of player that people are willing to just wait on to make a decision because he just is that good. And to me, he's one of my favorite recruits uh, ever, quite honestly, and I'm wishing him the best, and I want him to do what is best for him. Like I told him, do what's best for you big time. Be true to yourself. That's what this is about at the end of the day. Now, I'm sure that Ohio State is going to continue to recruit him, just like the players in that class are going to continue to recruit him because he is that good and he is that kind of player. We're talking about the kind of player that could go in line with Nick Bosa, Joey Bosa, Chase Young, and Zach Harrison, Tyreek Smith, and even Jonathan Cooper, who I'm going to talk about a little bit later today and what he's been able to be for Ohio State. But as this continues to play out and as Tumise's recruitment continues to go on, I'm going to pay attention to it in a way that I don't pay attention to a lot of others, right? Because I just known to me, say, for like three years now. But more than that, because I've said this before, to me, say, can swing the balance of power on a defensive line. Because the reason that this Ohio State recruiting class was so important and one of the reasons that I thought it was so good is because now they had two of the best defensive ends in the country committed in the same class in Jack Sawyer and to me, say, if Tumise were to say commit to Alabama, you're talking about Nick Saban continuing to chase, and now you're getting closer to taking that number one spot away from Ohio State to say nothing of Ohio State's chance at putting together the best recruiting class of all time. There's still some things that could break that way with Emeka Egbuka and JT Tuimolau and Christian Lay still making decisions on that front. But Texas A&M, knowing that they're in the mix, this is huge for them because he quickly would become the crown jewel of their class. Because they have been trying to get there for some time. And in a SEC West that is nothing but a gauntlet on the ground. Challenging you every single week. Even Arkansas going at Texas A&M's neck last year. And Arkansas wasn't much of anything. Is important. Now, Auburn, Alabama, LSU cut above right now. You understand that. We know what Arkansas, Mississippi State, Ole Miss could be. But presently... I think Tumise could look at Texas A&M and see himself as the next Miles Garrett coming out of there, or Vontez, or Vontez, uh, or Von Miller, not Vontez, perfect, Von Miller. I think he has that kind of ability, and right now it's a conversation about whether or not you think he's a five technique, uh, or maybe blows up into kind of a four eye, or even stand up at a nine and just be an outside linebacker in an odd front. I think he wants to make that decision. I think, you know, the thing that has been said is you don't see guys his size playing defensive end in the NFL at six foot three, two forty five. Now he's still growing, and I have every belief that he could do whatever he wants to do at the next level. But now that we know that 
high school football in so many places is being held up and we don't know what the recruiting situation is going to be like, especially at this time where college football teams don't even know if they're going to play football, right? At the time that we are talking, right, it's about 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. The Big Ten and the Pac-12 are still talking about who's playing football and who's not. The ACC has come out and said, we want to play football. The SEC has come out and said, we want to play football. Sports Illustrated reported that they think the Big 12 is split with like Oklahoma and Texas wanting to play and perhaps some others not. But I think that's all going to factor in, right? Because when you're talking about one of the better players in the country being recruited by Jeff Banks, being recruited by Larry Johnson and Greg Madison, being recruited by Elijah Robinson and Terry Price, and then David Turner and Ty Grantham. It's interesting for me that Florida is still here because Florida just took its 25th commitment on Monday with Corey Collier. So they might not have space in the boat left. And if they do, they only got that one spot that they've circled for him. a and still got plenty of room, as does Alabama. But when you look at Alabama, they've added Dallas Turner. They have five stars in Ja'Cory Brooks and J.C. Latham and Tommy Brockermeyer. Like, it is becoming another Alabama class on par with that 2017 class that had Tua Tonga Valoa and Henry Ruggs and Jerry Judy and just monster after monster. And it looks like Nick Saban is trying to do exactly that again, build himself yet another monster. So we're going to pay attention to this. We're going to see how this continues to go. I'm sure there are other schools that try to get into the mix. Oklahoma might be one of them, knowing that he's just back on the market again and maybe Calvin Thibodeau and maybe... Man, maybe they could talk him into perhaps taking another visit because they got him down for a junior day at one point and it was fine. But knowing that Oklahoma doesn't have a player of his caliber, at least right now in the recruiting class, is interesting to me because right now we're talking about Ethan Downs. And Ethan Downs is great. Ethan Downs could be outstanding. But to get into the first round, he's going to have to out to outkick his ranking. Whereas to me, say he looks ready-made to do this right now. And I think that's going to be interesting to watch. All right, that's it for me. This is.